Hey, Travis kiddos. Happy Monday. Happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Um, unfortunately, I don't own any Star Wars clothes, so I was not able to support that for you. However, happy Star Wars Day. <laughs> um, I hope you had a great weekend. I'm going to go over the essential reading work for the week. So these are the must-dos. Uh, you can find them on Connect Ed through Launchpad, and they're all in the Reading Writing Workshop book, which looks like this on the outside. So we're going to be doing pages 236 through 255 this week. So we're focusing on my helpers, talking about people who help you. So think about it for a minute. Who helps you? Is there anybody in your life who helps you? I'm sure you can think of a lot of people. Um, I can think of um, my family, my teachers and coworkers, my students. You guys definitely help me. Um, and the doctors and nurses right now and the emergency uh, essential personnel definitely help us. Um, and we are relying heavily on them right now. Um, so kind of a great time to talk about people who help us and to thank them and honor them. So let's check this out. Here is um, a girl and her coach. So how does this girl get help from her coach? What do you think? So her coach probably guides her, gives her advice, tells her how to swing. She looks like she's playing baseball or softball. Um, so her coach might tell her um, to run or to stay. Um, they coach the techniques and um, the way the game works, right? Strategies. Uh, so we're going to be talking about helpers all week. Um, this week's story is called All Kinds of Helpers, and it's about helpers in your life. It's a nonfiction text, and um, the essential question says, um, or is, who helps you? And um, in this story, you're going to read about the people in your community who help you and the different ways that they help. We have a new sound and new sight words this week for you. So the new sight words are B-R-O-T-H-E-R, -E brother. Um, these sight words, of course, you can find on pages 238 and 239 in the Reading Writing Workshop book. I like to read to my brother. Brother. Next one. F-A-T-H-E-R. Father. My father shows me how to swim. Father. F-R-I-E-N-D. Friend. We've been using this word in our writing since the beginning of the year, um, so you may already know this word, which is great. It's fun to have a good friend. L-O-V-E. Love. My family and I love each other. Love. M-O-T-H-E-R, mother. My, uh, Pam's mother is our soccer coach, mother. And we have Mother's Day coming up pretty soon here. P-I-C-T-U-R-E, picture. Now this is um, one that we can't sound out because how does C-T-U-R-E uh, make sure? Um, we don't say picture, right? We say picture. Um, it's just one of those that we have to learn. Um, so I drew a picture for my teacher. Now you notice most of these words are um, people that help you or ways that they help you, right? Love is a way to help someone. You can show them love, you can care for them um, and help them that way. And of course the love will make you want to help them. Um, friends, brother, fra father, mother, they're all people who help you, definitely. Okay, so let's go through those one more time. Brother, father, friend, love, mother, picture. Um, and we also have two vocabulary words this week, accept 
and often. Now, except we kind of say both words, there are two kinds of except, we kind of say them both the same. There's accept and except. One starts with an A, one starts with an E, but they have very different meanings. So accept with an A is our word for the week. Will you accept this gift? So that is that you will take it and um, you're okay with that, right? So accept with an E means other than or without. So um, I um, gave everyone a cookie except my dog. So everyone but not my dog. That's a different word. So we're doing accept with an A. Will you accept this gift? And often, we often go to the library. So often means regularly, um, not uh, not um, sporadically, so it doesn't happen very rarely, it happens frequently, okay? So those are our two vocabulary words, accept and often, and you can go over the sight words and create your own sentences for them. Again, that's pages 238 to 239 in the Reading Writing Workshop book. Now this week, um, the sound is just like last week where we had so many different spelling combinations for ooh. We had six of them. Um, this week we have a lot, we have five different combinations for the aw sound. Now we kind of just say aw like an o, but um, in California, but my mom's from New York and so we've always kind of said an aw. It's a slightly different sound. <laughs> so I might exaggerate that a little bit so that we show it's a slightly different sound. Um, or it might just come out naturally, I apologize. <laughs> so um, this aw sound, like in talk, walk, paw, um, cause, those um, are all, a bunch of those are spelled with different uh, spelling combinations. So let's go over those. We have A-W, like in raw, saw, paw. Again, you might say saw or aw. It's kind of a slightly different sound. Sorry it's, uh, if it's not quite how you say it. But A-W makes the aw sound. A can make the aw sound. Um, so you might hear it in, um, in calls or fall, all. Okay, kind of that aw sound. A-U, like in caught. Well, actually, um, that one's slightly different. I'm going to get to it in a second. But cause um, is A-U. This is the one that's caught. A-U-G-H. Now we know this one can also make af, like in the word laugh, one of our sight words, right? So English is weird, letters make all kinds of sounds, it's kind of crazy, but this can make aw as well. Taught, caught, um, those kinds of words uh, are A-U-G-H, okay? Also the aw sound. And A-L, walk, talk, those make the aw sound, th uh, this can make the aw sound in those words as well. So you um, can read the spelling, uh, the word lists, sentences um, on page 240 to 241. I'll do this one with you. Um, and the sentences, the your turn is all on your own. So let's read these together. Ball, talking, hall, saw, salt, taught, fault, smallest, yawn, also, pause, and daughter. Okay, um, the sentences, if you need to go slower, go ahead. Um, you can go back. I highly recommend you go back and do it on your own. It's really good practice because um, I went kind of quickly there. Last fall, I taught Paul how to draw. He drew a tall tree using chalk. Okay, so um, they're not all exact, I don't say them all exactly the same, but they all make that awesome. sound. Okay, so your turn, you practice on your own. And then we get to the story, all kinds of helpers. So the helpers in your community, how they help you, you'll see all kinds of helpers in this story. I see parents, family members, teachers, coaches, um, doctors, uh, firefighters, police officers, bus drivers, um, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents, all kinds of helpers everywhere. Um, we're also focusing on the author's purpose. Remember, the purpose is the reason for doing something. So why did the author choose to write this story? 
Why did the author uh, put this information in the text? Hmm. So let's see if we can figure it out. So we have some clues that help us um, from the text uh, and then the author's purpose. So one clue was families love you and teachers help you learn. Teachers love you too. <laughs> um, so families love you and teachers help you learn. Doctors, nurses, and safety helpers keep you healthy and safe. Hmm. So those are two clues that lead you to the author's purpose, which is to let you know that there are many people helping you in many ways. Okay, that's why the author wrote this um, selection or text, was to teach us that. Okay, um, we'll continue to talk about that through the week and we can find the um, author's purposes in all the stories that we read today or all the texts and selections that we read this week. Sorry, not today. <laughs> okay, so about the text, uh, write about the text. This is your writing for the week. So um, the text, the model is an informa uh, informative text. It's information writing. So it's Facts, nonfiction, um, expository, we also call it. So um, all kinds of helpers. It's in response to that text um, that is just before this. And so this student model is writing about how someone um, helps him or her. Okay, so you can read through that, and then you're going to write about a group of helpers in your community. You can use all kinds of helpers as a model. You can also think of your own ideas. So you could um, use some examples from the story, from the text. You can think up your own, totally up to you. You can do a combination of both, um, but try to think of ways that um, helpers in the community help you and write about that with examples um, and specifics. Uh, you can get really detailed in this writing. We've been working on adding details, varying sentences, um, including adjectives, all those kinds of things. So um, you could try to start with an opening sentence, put all of your information and a closing sentence at the end. That would be a great structure for this since it's an expository writing. Um, so all of that work, again, is in your reading writing workshop book in um, Connected on Launchpad. As always, have fun with it and happy learning.